Hey guys, Quiv the Lazy Geek here and today we're going to talk about capture computers or imaging computers like this little brick that I have mounted permanently on my tripod and connected to all of my equipment up there. Um, what are the criteria for such a computer? Do you need something powerful? And what should you really like be careful about? So first things first, uh, the thing that um, is very important for me, at least when choosing a computer like that is the number of USB ports, uh, because you can always use a USB hub to ask you to add USB ports. But I've noticed that a lot of the equipment is in astrophotography is very sensitive to USB and even the cables can cause issues. And we've seen that at the Nina uh, on the Nina support discord about like cables to ASI cameras um, and other pieces of equipment that seem to have issues from time to time. And we want to avoid that. So as much as possible, I want to avoid having to use a USB hub unless it's powered. But a powered USB hub is yet another piece of equipment that you can forget that you need to connect, that you need to put somewhere. And, you know, it annoys me. So when I chose this computer, one of the main reasons I chose it is that it has four, four USB ports, two here and two there, which means that I can connect my uh, camera, I can connect my guide cam, I can connect uh, my mount, and then the only indulgence that I have is I use the uh, on-camera USB hub uh, to actually connect to the filter wheel and to the uh, focuser, the EAF and the EFW. Now, the reason I accept a hub for those two is that, well, they're not very data intensive applications, right? They will receive a command from time to time. It's basically a serial protocol. It doesn't use a lot of bandwidth at all. And that is very forgiving in terms of USB. So among those four USB ports, I have uh, two that are USB 3 and two that are USB 2. Um, which is fine. Uh, USB 3, I think, is important for the guide cam as, and it's important for the main imaging camera as much as possible because it will, you know, diminish the time to actually download the frames to the computer, which can always be good. That's one of the first things that kind of shocked me you know, when I saw the first version of the ASI Air is that it was using like USB 2 ports, which I thought, well, you know, it works, it works, but it's not, uh, not completely ideal. Now, Another thing that you want about your imaging computer, ideally, and especially if you're using software like Nina, or you want to use PixInsight on your computer, is to make sure that it will come with, or at least support, the installation of a 64-bit uh, OS. So if you're using ECOS and you're on Linux and you have PixInsight there, make sure that you'll be able to install 64-bit versions of Linux. If you have a Windows computer like this one, make sure it's Windows 64 on that. Uh, home version, Pro version at this point doesn't really matter anymore. Although I think the Pro version of Windows has more options to delay uh, Windows updates, which can severely mess with your computer. That's one of the first things I recommend is make your computer completely up to date and also configure the time frame in which it's allowed to reboot. For me, I only allow this to reboot for updates during the day. Uh, I think between like 10 a.m. and 12 uh, p.m. that would be. So very important as well. And another thing, then after that, like it's all of this is really all a matter of personal preference, really, but that's how I go about it. Now, in terms of the actual specs of the computer, this thing has a Core i5 uh, from a couple of generations ago, and it has eight gigs of RAM. And the reason, there's two main reasons I got this Core i5 is one for performance in the autofocus and in the HFR calculation in Nina, and two so that my Google Chrome remote desktop uh, does not like hang. Because I've noticed that with, I used to have like um, an eight atom based, very, I mean, much smaller and 12 volt computer on there that uh, simply like Google remote desktop on it would crash from time to time and everything was really, really slow. And that happens with a lot of compute stick type of computers as well. So I try to avoid them. The advantage, and this is something I haven't mentioned, this computer runs on 19 volts. Ideally, if you're going to take it on the field, it should be running on 12 volts. It's just much easier to, um, to use a, a computer that's running on 12 volts. Now, 
for me, I, this one is permanently here. I'm never moving it and I'm not bringing it in the field. So I'm okay with 19 volt. And when I go further away, I use a laptop that by the way has three USB ports. It's almost impossible to find one with four, except that I mean, you can, but one will be USB-C um, these days. Um, so one of the reasons I mentioned as well for the processor power is autofocus and HFR. Why is that related? Uh, well, autofocus relies on star detection and relies on HFR calculation. And in particular, the star detection process can be very resource in intensive. Uh, it will do an operation on the image that's called a convolution. And uh, that can take some time, even though in Nina, we actually do um, uh, some performance enhancements there and we reduce the size of the image before we do that. But it can negatively affect like the huge sensors that we've uh, started to see, like the ASI uh, 6200, which has a humongous 62 megapixel sensor, if I remember correctly. And that's actually like, it's better to subframe when you're using Nina with it. Um, another thing is that if you're using a color camera, and you want the best star detection and HF4 uh, detection possible, you'll want to use, at least if you're using Nina, the unlinked stretch and the debayered HFR, uh, which are enabled by default. And those two are very computer resource intensive. So I try to have something that's decent on there, that's running 64 bits, and that at least has an i3 for that. There's another reason I went with the i5 in this is for PixInsight. Um, I don't really use PixInsight to stack stuff on this, uh, but I do use PixInsight from time to time in the middle of the night to double check that the frames that I'm getting are decent because sometimes I really want to double check uh, in a, a com competent like uh, processing piece of software like PixInsight uh, to do so. So that's all the reasons why I've gone with a computer that is fairly powerful. And I would personally never buy an underpowered computer again. So I would never go with a compute stick and I would not go with an Atom or Celeron for that matter based computer. I would try to go for an i3 at minimum. And you know, your mileage may vary. That's just my way of looking at things because from my experience with an Atom based computer, it was just too, too, too frustrating. Um, and so that's where I'm coming from here. And I think that's, uh, that's about it, about com uh, computers. Of course, you know, uh, it's, this is just how I've approached it from my lazy and frustration-free kind of uh, uh, way of appro approaching the, the ho hobby. And, you know, I hope this has been useful. Today, by the way, we're having clear skies, at least for now. So I'll be uh, probably imaging again the Sunflower Galaxy. And, you know, uh, thanks for watching this video. If you like this video, if it was useful, please click the like button. Also, don't hesitate to subscribe to this channel. And don't forget to look up at the stars whenever you can. See you soon.